Hi guys, today we're going to start our new module, which is module 16. This module is all about measuring and looking at data. So um, I know that there's a good mix of the girls and the boys in this class, but um, the, I know that most of my boys in this class are into sports and we have talked many times about sports and fantasy football and everything. So for this lesson, we're going to um, start learning about what's called measures of center. And when we look at sets of data, what we sometimes want to be able to do is describe the numbers using one number that would summarize the data. So what we're going to look at today is we're going to take a look at some football statistics to help us kind of understand why and where this stuff is actually used in real life. Of course, it's used in many, many other places, but one of the most common ones is in sports. So, um, for example, we're looking, you know what, I'll, I'll show you in a second, but um, first, for, so that you can understand, the term that we're talking about is called measures of center. Measures of center are different ways that you can summarize a whole big group of data using one number. If you have a whole bunch of numbers that you have recorded and you want to be able to make a statement about those numbers, you don't want to have to list out all of the numbers that you recorded. You want to be able to use one number to kind of summarize it. So this is what we do, what we use measures of center for. So getting into the sports. One of the most common places data is used is in sports. So what we want to think about are things like a quarterback's completion rate or yards per carry that a running back is running in a certain game. In order to get those numbers, there's statisticians who are working nonstop using data and measures of center. So what I included here first are Saquon Barkley and Patrick Mahomes. So for Saquon Barkley, while you're watching a game, a football game on TV, you're going to hear, you have heard, the commentators saying in the middle of the game, well, you know, and they even display it on the screen sometimes, is yards per, gar per, yards per carry this game is, you know, um, 5.6, right? Something like that. Um, and with quarterbacks, they always have a completion rate. So they'll show you, you know, how many passes he's attempted and then how many passes are completed. And that gives them a completion rate. All of this stuff, it's all data. It's all statistics. Um, so if we take a look at Saquon, what we have up here are his total carries and the total number of yards. From this, they've calculated his average. This average 4.6 means that on an average day, Saquon Barkley is going to run approximately 4.6 yards every time he carries the ball. So if Daniel Jones gives him the ball and he runs with it, on average, he'll run 4.6 yards. Um, down here, you see some more details. I only included 2019, just so I could fit everything on the page. But what you'll see is his uh, attempts, how many times he carried the ball, and then how many, um, how many, what is this one, attempts per game. That's not the one I wanted to look at. This is his total yards, his average, and then this is the yards per game. So this is the average yards per carry and this is the average yards per game so that means on average in the year 2019 every game that Saquon Barkley played he averaged about 77 yards they have all sorts of different statistics for that if you see the past three years Saquon Barkley has never even fumbled once but there's other statistics that you can look at so in order to get these numbers that they put on ESPN for you and, and when you're watching a football game, in order to get all these numbers, they're using measures of center. They're using what we're going to learn today. I also included Patrick Mahomes' stats for 2019. So what you can see here is number of touchdowns, number of interceptions, his yards. Um, down here we're looking at his games again. Um, and here's what I wanted to show you, the passing, the completions. So you can see how many attempts. That means this is how many passes he threw in 2019. And then this is how many of those were actually completed passes. And then what you see is that the percentage rate for that. So that's a 
completion rate. And as you're watching a game, during the game, there are statisticians who are constantly updating these numbers. So you'll hear after a certain play, um, the completion rate or the yards per carry for a running back. So all of these things couldn't be done without the data and without the measures of sensor that we're going to learn today. So of course I had to include this one for Danny because of his favorite kicker, Jake Elliott. Yet you can even use the measures of center when you're calculating the kicker stats because they also have a percentage rate. So he's got an 84.6 accuracy um, rate. Okay, so had to include that for you, Danny. Moving on, the two, there's a bunch of different measures of center that can be used to summarize a set of data, but what we're gonna focus on are the two most popular ones, and that's the mean and the median. So first, the mean is exactly the same as the average, okay? So hopefully you remember how to find an average of a number because we have done it before, but if you don't, of course, we're gonna review it. It's the most commonly used measure of center because it usually provides the most accurate summary of the data. When we're talking about the two previous things that I showed you, Saquon Barkley and Patrick Mahomes, those averages were calculated using the mean. The median is the same exact thing as the middle number that's in a data set. It's not as commonly used because it doesn't always provide an accurate summary of the data because it's just the number that's in the middle. It doesn't necessarily give you an idea of what all of the numbers are like. So what I'd like for you to remember, and you can fill this in, mean equals average and median equals middle. And if median is tricky for you, sometimes if you know uh, like when you're driving, there's a median in the road. The median's usually in the middle of the road separating it, right? So let's talk about how we can find the mean or the average. So first thing you do is you count how many values there are all together in your data set. After you do that, you add them all up and then you divide by the total number that there were. So obviously we can do these by hand. The ones that we're looking at with sports, there's lots and lots of technology, spreadsheets, um, specific programs that are all used to do that calculating. So first we're gonna count how many pieces of data we have. So there's one, two, three, four, five. So there's five total values in my data set. Now I'm gonna add them together. So this is gonna be two plus three plus one plus one plus three. And I'm going to, once I add them all up, I'm gonna divide by the total which was five. So what you wanna to try to do is make this easier for yourself. You see things like, oh, I know what that is, that's five. This is two, and this is five now, so it's gonna be 10, but it, you can do it the long way too. You can do two plus three is five, plus one is six, plus one is seven, plus three is 10. So it's 10 divided by five, which is two. So the mean or the average of this set of data is two. So if you're looking at what it is, it's the number of siblings that these kids have. So Amy's got two siblings, Ben has three siblings, Cal and Don have one, and Eva has three. So the average is two. Now we're gonna talk about how to find the median or the middle. This one's super easy, but if you have, depending on how many numbers you have, you may have to find an average. So first thing that you do is you list your data in order from least to greatest. You can't skip that step. After you've listed it from least to greatest, you're going to determine your middle number. If you have an odd number of values, what you can do is you can cross off the end until you get to the middle. So for example, let's say I have something like this. If I want to find my middle number, I'm going to put them in order from least to greatest. So 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. And because this is an odd number, I can easily see the middle. But if it was a lot of numbers, what you can do is you can cross off the ends until you get to the middle. And then you can find your middle number like that. That's the easy way. If you have an even number of values though, you're going to end up with no one middle number, you're gonna have two middle numbers. And so in order to find your median, you're gonna to have to find the average of those two numbers. Sometimes they're the same. So if they're the same, you don't have to find the average. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this set of data and I'm going to add one more to it. I'm gonna add three. So if I take this, 
I have one, one, two, three, three, and four. If I cross off my ends until I get to the middle, I'll see that I have two in the middle. So in order to find the median, you basically want to see what's halfway between those two numbers. So you just find the average to make that easier. So you do two plus three divided by two. So that's five divided by two, which is 2.5. Now, if you can figure out what's halfway between those two numbers in your head, then you don't have to do this. If you know that two and a half is halfway between two and three, then you're good. And that would be my median. So let's do two examples. The first one is a list of distances ran. This is, um, it's from the textbook. It was, I think it was supposed to be a gym teacher keeping track of how far his students ran. And we're going to find the median of that data. Then we're going to do the your turn. So first I'm going to list everything out in order from least to greatest. So the smallest number I see here is three. And then the next would be four. Make sure you look for repeats because sometimes you have a number more than once. I have a five here. And I'm going to just make sure that there's not another five and there is. So we need two fives. And then six, seven, there's another seven here. Then there's an eight, and hopefully you notice there's three tens. So one, two, three. My suggestion is always to count and make sure you know how many you have so that you can make sure you didn't skip any numbers. So this is two, four, six, eight, 10, 11. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, so you know you got them all. Now, because this is an odd number of values, I can cross off the ends until I get to the center. And there is my median. The median is 7. Okay, and that would be the answer, nice and easy. For the your turn, we have Charlotte recorded the number of minutes she spent exercising in the past 10 days we're gonna find the median of this data. So first we put everything in order from least to greatest. So I'm gonna count first, two, four, six, eight, ten. I have 10 numbers, so that's even. I know I'm gonna to have to find the middle number either using the average or by doing it in my head, but first I have to list them in order. So one, two, next would be four, five, Six, seven, eight, another eight, nine, and twelve. And just make sure we have ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten. And now we can try to find our median. So we can cross off the ends till we get to the two middle numbers. Six and seven. And you can either find the average or you can say halfway between six and seven is six and a half, 6.5. Just to show you, if you're going to find the average, it's six plus seven over two. So that is 13 divided by two, which is six and a half. This will be easier if you do it in your head. Okay. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do, I'm trying to get my picture for Saquon and Patrick Mahomes again, so I can show you something. Sometimes one of these measures is not going to be a good representation of the data, okay? So sometimes finding the average might not really be, the average that you get might not really be a good approximation of what all the numbers look like. And other times, the average is the best way to look at it. The median might not be the best way to look at it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to see um, how to compare the mean and the median. And then looking at our data sets, decide which one describes the data better. So for this first example, we're looking at monthly earnings of several teenagers. $200, $320, $275, $250, $750, $350, and then $310. So if you look at all these numbers, one of them doesn't seem to really belong. That would be the 750. When we put these numbers in order from least to greatest, the 750 will be all the way on the end. So when we find our median, the median's gonna be something like these numbers. 
When we find the average though, the 750 is probably gonna make the number a lot larger. So let's see what happens. First, we'll find the mean. So we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven numbers. So when we add them up, we're gonna divide by seven. So it's 200 plus 320 plus 275 plus 250 plus 750 plus 350 plus 310 all over seven. And when we find the median, I'm gonna put it down here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna list them in order and then we're gonna find the middle number. So the smallest number is 200, followed by 250, and then 275, 310. Notice I cross them off as I do it so that I don't accidentally repeat. 320, 350, and finally, 750. Now, I know that these numbers are really, really large. Um, what you wanna do is you wanna try to find things that you can do in your head or things that add up to what you know would be, you know, maybe uh, a thousand or a hundred or something like that to make it a little bit easier for yourself. Um, for these types of numbers, I'm not opposed to you using your calculator if you want, it's okay. Um, so what I want you guys to do is find the mean find the median, and then compare them. Um, well, you can pause and try this, and then when we come back, we'll discuss which is the better um, measure that describes the data. Okay, so when you find your mean, you should find that it is approximately $351, and when you find the median, you find that it's $310. When you're looking at which one might be is the better fit for the data, you wanna look at what the numbers are. Although all, all, most of them are less than $300, right? There's only these ones. And so the 310 is way better of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a way better description of the, the numbers here. The 351, there's only one, not even one, there's only one number that's greater than 351. So that's not a good representation of the data. The median in this case would be better. So for the reflect question, um, we're looking at Luca, we miss Luca. Luca's final exam scores for his semester are 70, 72, 99, 72, and 69. We're gonna find the mean and the median and then decide which one we think is the better description. So before anything, most of these numbers are in the 70s. Then there's this random 99. So his, a good approximation of this data is gonna be something in the 70s, right? So let's see what happens if we find the mean and then we find the medium. So um, again, I'm okay if you guys wanna use your calculators for this, That's I don't, I don't mind. Um, so I'll set you up and then you guys will do this on your own mean, median, and we're gonna compare, okay? Um, so for the mean, we're adding them up. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're going to do 70 plus 72 plus 99 plus 72 plus 69 divided by 5. And then for the median, we put them in order. So the lowest is 69. Then we have a 70. Then there was two 72s and a 99. Okay. Okay. Um, I think I'd also like you guys to try number seven and eight. So why don't you do all of this on this page? And then when you come back, we'll discuss the results, okay? Okay, so for number four, once you do the mean, you should find 76.4 for the mean, and then the median should be 72. Um, so what you wanna do is decide which one of these makes more sense to be a summary of Luca's exam scores. He's got, if once you, if the easiest way is look at the ones once they're written in order. 76.4 is not a good approximation at all because he didn't get anything even close to a 76 up until here. 
So most of his grades were way lower than that, and he had that 199. However, the mean, I'm sorry, the median, 72, is much closer, 69, 70, and 72. And that 99 is just that one score that was a little bit different than the rest, or a lot different than the rest. So the 72 is more typical. For this section here, um, finding the mean, you should find 78.5 when you do that in your calculators, 78 and a half. And then the median, you have an even number of points scored, so you do the average of the 77 and the 84, or you can do it in your head what's halfway between those. It'll be 80 and a half. So this one is um, a little trickier to think about which one of these better describes the typical number of points squared. So if you take a look, they're pretty close numbers. So you want to look very closely here. 78.5 is right about where the 77 is. But then it jumps up to 84 and 85. 80.5 is close to all three of these numbers. So I would say that the 80 and a half is a little bit closer. Okay. Um, if you said 78.5, as long as you can back yourself up and explain, then that's fine. So let's say that the 80 and a half better describes the data because it's closer to more of the points. It's closer to more of the values, okay? The 78.5 is not as close to the other values as 80 and a half is. So that's it for this lesson. Um, what I wanted to just show you before we left was going back to the football statistics that we were looking at earlier. Most of the time, we were talking about how we're looking at the average. If you took all of Saquon Barkley's carries for um, yards per carry and you listed them all out and you found the median, it would probably not be a very good um, representation of how many yards he carries the ball every time he gets it. The average is way better in this case, as well as the yards per game. Same thing goes for Patrick Mahomes and Jake Elliott. Okay? All right, guys. So um, on the homework today, you have to do... I'm trying to remember what I said. I can't remember what page it was. I'm sorry, what worksheet it was. But you're going to do um, the mean and the median, and I think there's one where you compare. So have fun.